So we have been talking about this possible incoming drop since Friday before it became the cool thing to do on YouTube on Monday when overnight from Sunday coming into Monday, Bitcoin's price dropped. So to put it into perspective, this right here is where we warned you guys about the incoming drop. And this circle right here is when everybody else started saying that the drop was coming they were just a little bit late so now that you guys know that i am indeed a wizard i'm just joking so where exactly are we on the drop right now as you guys can see i predicted around a 25 percent drop so we haven't hit 25 percent yet but we've we've gotten pretty close we're at 19 and a half now where I was off was in my prediction of when this drop would happen. I spoke more about towards the end of the month, possibly seeing that drop and it happened a lot earlier than we anticipated. But the incoming drop nonetheless was in the charts and we knew it was inevitable. So now that we've dropped some and we've more or less reset the RSI to the point where we might be off of that bearish divergence is the drop finally over or could we possibly still see lower prices this month let's go ahead and dive into today's analysis hey what's up jay here and welcome to bitcoin daily bringing you guys the best tips tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors the goal of this channel is to empower the community with the knowledge and resources to help you get that wealth up to that next level. So if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget, smash that like button. It is free and takes you about two seconds. Of course, if you have any questions about anything that we cover here today, drop it in the comments. Let's jump into the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fear and greed index here. As you guys can see, we are back in the fear category here. Yesterday we were neutral, last week we were in greed, and last month we were in extreme greed. So sometimes this could give you an idea of where market sentiment is. And this is the lowest that we've been since back in September before we had that takeoff in, of course, October. So by now, I'm sure everyone is asking what happened to Moon Vember? And of course, that is definitely a fair question. So we still have a shot here to go back up and end the month in the green. We have 11 days to be exact. So is it possible? I mean, in Bitcoin, anything is possible, guys. Is it likely? uh that then it starts like when you when you try to realistically think about is it likely to hit our target that we set here in the beginning of the month that would put us up uh 42 percent on the month which is what we did last year it's getting it's it's difficult it's not likely but it is possible right because now the move is no longer just a 42 percent move up now this move from where we're currently at to where that would be it would be about a 55 percent run up in 11 days uh it that's you know it's tough but it can be done you can see here our most recent uh impulse move up was a 65 percent move up between the 29th of september to the 20th of october so it is more than 11 days, but it's just to show you guys that it is possible. So if we need 55%, you can see here that within two weeks of this impulse move, the, the last one we had, we did 55%. So again, it's a little bit more than 11 days, it's three days more, but it's just to show you guys that it is still possible to get a big impulse move to the upside and maybe not hit the top target here that we were hoping for that was around that 88 to $90,000 range, but we can still set up some new all-time highs before the end of this month and possibly close within the $70,000 range. So let's look back on what happened last time we had that bearish divergence. From the time that it started to the time that the drop happened, it was 39 days and this time around from the time that it started to the time that we saw the drop 
it was 26 days, so a 13 day difference. So now let's see from the time that the drop started to the time that we got that next impulse move. You guys can see here, it took about 23 days. So if we put that same amount of time, 23 days, that would mean that we wouldn't see the impulse move to about the first week of December. Now, if we take into account that this drop took around an estimated 25% less time, and we put that same equation on the amount of time before an impulse move, that moves are 23 days to about 17 days. So that actually gives us a date of December 1st. Now, December 1st is a Wednesday. Can we get a big impulse move on a Wednesday? I mean, it's definitely possible, but usually there has to be a reason for that to be on such a random day in the middle of the week. Our previous impulse move started on a Friday and it's actually the Friday of that is a, it's usually the expiration, the op option contracts expirations. So let's say that it happens on a Friday on the day that the option contracts expire, that would give us the 26th of this month. So we've moved this back down to about the 26th. That means it's going to be about 12 days or so before we see the next impulse move to the upside. So that is literally a week from now when we could potentially see that next impulse move, at least the beginning of it. And something like this uh, could rally over the weekend and we could see by Tuesday, which would be the 30th, you know, prices going back up and possibly even setting new all-time highs. And that would end the month for us in the positive, in the green. As you guys know, November is the most bullish month, but we had bearish divergence in the charts. Now that the bearish divergence is potentially reset, we could see a move higher or a move back up eventually, right? The impulse move is eventually going to come. The question is trying to figure out when and by how much. So again, we're trying to figure out and piece this puzzle together. I'm taking data from the previous time that we saw the same exact scenario and trying to make it fit. So that's how we got to 12 days before the next impulse move, because the last one was 23 days before the next impulse move when we saw the same drop due to the same bearish divergence, but it happened faster this time around, around 25% faster. So we kind of calculated that in, but then we also took into account on what day that move started which it would probably be on a Friday, the last Friday of the month, which is a day that the big option contracts expire. So from here till then, we could potentially still see lower levels, maybe even touch this level right here, which was the target that I gave you guys for the drop, which would make it around a 25% drop. Now, another interesting thing, the same way that we deducted 25% from the amount of time that it took here, if you deduct 25% from the 25% drop that we saw last time, it actually gives us 19% as our price target at that point, right? So if we're using that same calculation that everything re is reduced this time around by 25%, then that would mean that we did hit our bottom um, today. That would be the bottom of this drop. So from here on for the next week, we could potentially just kind of be consolidating something like this before then getting that move up at the end of the month. You'll see here that we saw something similar after we bottomed out on the 21st, it was on the 29th that then we hit that impulse move up. So that's about eight days. If again, we put that 25% calculation onto this, that would give us about six days of consolidation here after the bottom before an impulse move up, almost lining up perfectly off by one day really of when I'm thinking we could get that next impulse move up on the 26th of this month. So now that we have taken a look at the chart and have some ideas, some probability plays, some predictions on when we could see, we can possibly bottom out, when we could possibly start moving back up, when we could potentially see that next impulse move. Let's go ahead and look at some trade setups in case we do get a move up over the weekend. 
primarily Sunday going into Monday. So now because we're kind of in a risky area, kind of middle of nowhere, I don't really like any trades on, at the current price. I want to see a decision being made by Bitcoin and know that we're moving in a direction for certain. If we zoom out a bit here, you will see that this there is a lot of buying and selling in this range. So we can expect a lot of consolidation here as it's been support and resistances multiple times over, including all the way back here. So I'm going to zoom in and the levels that I'm looking for, I want to see the prices get back over $62,000. Now, 58 is a resistance and it is a level you can play. However, you might see a lot of consolidation there. You can, however, use an average down strategy where you uh, buy in at 58,000, then maybe at the next support, which is around 55,000 right here and below that, which is around $50,000 to $50,000, right? So you can definitely do that. However, the safer play, if you just wanna be a little bit more conservative, is to wait on the break back up and, uh, and wait for a break back above, above 60. So 60 is still a risky play, but it is a play you can do. The safer play will probably be a break above 62. A break above 62 could potentially lead us back up to that $65,000 area. And then a, a break above 65 could, and I think would potentially take us back to that previous all-time high. A break above the previous all-time high would at least take us up to seventy two dollars to $75,000. So those are basically going to be the breakout entries and the support entries. The ones I just mentioned on the way up and going down is going to be uh, 55 and 52 and 50 if it were to get that low. I don't think we would. But if we were to break below for any reason, market makers would love to cause mass panic in the markets and drop us all the way down to 50. So it is a scenario that could definitely happen before we move up. So on the way down again, it's a little bit on the riskier side, but you can definitely, if you average down your entries, then it kind of mitigates some of the risk. And then I would keep my stop loss either below 52 or below 50, depending um, how much you want to average down and how much you want to risk and what your risk tolerance is, of course. So that is it, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I hope you guys have had an amazing week, even though prices have been down. Keep your head up, guys. It's only a matter of time before we see prices go back up. I don't think that the bull run is done yet. I still think that we have another, at least one more impulse move to the upside minimum. So I think we, we see at least one more. After that, we have to reevaluate the situation. But for now, I still believe we have one more impulse move in us. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, turn on the notifications and smash that like button. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in today's video, of course, you could always drop it in the comments. I'm always happy to help you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have an amazing weekend. As always, peace and love.